Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about trophic level, food chain, and food web. And we'll be following this outline. What is trophic level? The different trophic level and their functions. We'll talk about the food chain as well as the food web. What do you understand by the term trophic level? The trophic level of a particular organism is the position or the spot the organism occupies in a food chain or in a food web. Take a look at this diagram being displayed. You see the producers or the plants, you see the consumers or the herbivores or even the carnivores. In this diagram that you can see, the producers are at the base and they represent the trophic level 1. Now the consumers, those that feed directly on the plants, they are called herbivores. They represent the trophic level 2. Those that feed directly on the herbivores represent the trophic level 3. And those that feed on that carnivores represent the trophic level 4. So it goes on and on, though it's not, it does not go on indefinitely anyway. It does not go on indefinitely because as you move up the food chain, energy what decreases. So note that the position an organism occupies in a food chain is regarded as the trophic level of this organism. In fact, let's just state this. The plant here is trophic level 1. The grasshopper is trophic level 2. The frog or toad is trophic level 3 and the snake is actually the trophic level 4. So the position of each organism is actually its trophic level in the food chain or in the food web. Now let's start by discussing trophic level 1. The producers occupy trophic level 1. They are actually plant in terrestrial environment while in aquatic environment they are phytoplankton and aquatic plants. It should also be noted there are a lot of microorganisms that undergo chemosynthesis, producing their own food. They are also categorized as the producers. Take a look at this plant that is being displayed on your screen. The measure of the rate at which sunlight energy is being absorbed by this plant is termed gross primary productivity. Let me put it in another word. The total amount of carbon or organic matter produced by this plant from inorganic material using sunlight energy is regarded as gross primary productivity. Take a look at this plant again. Some of the energy or food produced by this plant is used by this same plant to carry out a lot of metabolic activities. You know this plant uses energy to withstand the force of wind to carry out excretion, to transport food. Now, some of this energy is used by these same plants to carry out these activities. After using up some of this energy, the one that is remaining is regarded as the net primary productivity. So, the total amount of energy produced by this plant minus the one used by this same plant for day-to-day -day activities is called net primary productivity. Note that this net primary productivity or the amount of energy or food that is remaining is stored and this is the food that is available to the consumers. Next is the trophic level 2 which is the primary consumer. As you can see from the diagram, the grasshopper is actually the primary consumer because it feeds on the plant which is the producer. Note that not all the energy in this plant is actually utilized by this grasshopper. Now the grasshopper feed on this plant. The food in the grasshopper, not all of them are actually digested and absorbed. Some of this food are passed out as undigested food. Even the food absorbed by this grasshopper, some of them are utilized to carry out their day to day activity. So, a little amount of this food is stored for the next organism which is actually the frog. Trophic level 3 is occupied by the frog which feed on the grasshopper, trophic level 2, while trophic level 4 is occupied by the snake which feed on trophic level 3. Note that as we move from the producers, the plant, to the final consumer, the snake, energy decreases as you move from one trophic level to another. This actually explains the concept of ecological energy efficiency which is low in an ecosystem. Let's talk about the food chain and food web in an ecosystem. The food chain is actually a sequence of transfer of food or energy from the producer to the final consumer in an ecosystem. Now, take a look at this diagram being displayed on the screen. You can see the plant is the producer and food is transferred from the producer to the primary consumer, from the primary consumer to the secondary consumer, from the secondary consumer to the tertiary consumer in this ecosystem. Now, this transfer of food in an ecosystem 
in a very simple manner is called a food chain. Let's talk about the food web. Food web is actually all the possible pathways through which energy flow in an ecosystem. I can also refer to food web as all the interconnection of several food chains occurring in our natural environment or in a particular ecosystem. Now take a look at this diagram. The producer, as you can see, is actually the plant. Now several organisms are actually feeding on the plant and several organisms, the number of organisms are also feeding on the primary what, consumer which is feeding on the plant. So we realize that there are many food chains occurring in this environment. Now this combination of several food chains that happen in our natural environment is regarded as the food web. Note again. Look at a simple food chain in this food web. The plant is being fed on by the grasshopper. The grasshopper is fed on by the frog. The frog is fed on by the snake. Now, but there are many of these food chains in this particular ecosystem. The combination of all the possible food chain, all, all the ways energy flow in an ecosystem in this environment is regarded as the food web. This is the end of the lecture. Please like and subscribe to our channel to support us. Thanks for watching.